there's a fame that comes with it and a, and a notoriety that comes with it, but unlike somebody who's famous for being a performer or, or, or something like that, you're famous for your business. So the whole idea that um, people will be slightly more forgiving of certain people who have a high profile if, say, it comes through being a singer or a rock star, these sorts of things, but being a finance man, being an OAM, all of that, um, do you feel a bizarre pressure at times where sometimes maybe you just want to have the shits in the shops, but you can't quite because then it ends up being yeah. you going off? Well, it is a funny feeling, you know. I mean, rarely is there a day go by when we used to have our catch cry, you know, at Aussie, we'll save you, you know, where I get, <laughs> we'll save you, you know. And, but people are generally, you know, happy, they have a joke, uh, but, you know, sometimes, like everyone, you just want a bit of time out and you sit down at, at a coffee shop and next thing, someone, you know, pulls a chair up and actually sits down and says, oh, look, I've been trying to get through to your office. <laughs> for and they actually sit down. Yeah. You know, and now I, I tell people, they, then they want a card, and I say, look, I'm sorry, I've got no cards on me. You know, there's that side of it. Mm. And there's the, always the narc. You know, I'm, unfortunately, Australia, like, when I was really battling, um, you know, you get 100% of everyone behind you, but as soon as you show any signs of success. You know, I remember when I, you know, after about, oh, about nine years, you know, I thought I'm gonna really, really, you know, I went without for, you know, 10, we're 22 years now, and I end, I end up scrapping up and I bought a Ferrari, and I, which I'd rarely, I didn't want to be seen in it, but I'd drive down Double Bay, I thought this is pretty safe, and I just <laughs> finished a, Camouflage. there's been a TV, uh, uh, t television commercials running with me driving Holden Commodore, you know, giving advice. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I made the mistake having my window down because I tint them up very heavily. <laughs> and I had my window down, this ute pulled up beside me, a guy with a blue singlet, and, and said, you know, nice effing Commodore, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> and I just put oh. the window back oh. up. <laughs> Geez, look, if you've you got know, a Ferrari that you've got to wind up, but, I'd be sending it back to the but, shop. But generally, <laughs> you know, people are unfortunate people. First thing they do is smile. They want to come up every day. You know, I can't walk 100 metres without someone coming up. And that's it. I always find time and smile and chat with them or give them some advice. So uh, I'm fortunate that, you know, it's been, it's been a good story. Because, Lorna, how, how do you do deal with customers who... They have an expectation, okay, you're the face of the brand, you can fix all my problems. But sometimes the problems are 100% of the consumer's making. Um, they did the wrong thing, they bought the right, all of this, yet somehow it's your fault and you've got to solve it for them. Do you feel a responsibility that even if the problem is an unreasonable one, I've got to solve it, or sometimes are you now confident enough that you can say, this is just one consumer who's done the wrong thing? Um, I mean, I think that's always a difficult one. Um, I mean, I, I really feel a connection with my customers I, and I don't want to disappoint them. I, I, my customers inspire me to do and be better every single day and they're the reason that I, that I do this because I want to inspire them to live an active life. Mm. Um, but I also love my product and I have to stand behind my product because my team do such an incredible job making it. So, you know, I have to just take that one case by case and, and try to do the right thing as a good human being. Mm. Russell, how do you decide where the line is about um, attention grabbing stunts or deals or offers that you'll then back up with with marketing because to me it seems like we live life at this uh, at this hyper pace and sort of collectively as a as a peoples we have ADD which means uh, part of me would think that it's not smart to be on television every week but then part of me thinks they forgot <coughs> that you were on TV last week so yeah. how do you decide uh, part of my voice I'm I'm sick as a dog at the moment, but I ran out of sick days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I ran out of sick days, so oh. here I am. Um, look, you need to talk to the boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of a fine balance, but it really gets exaggerated and blown out of proportion. Like, I'll get journalists hounding me, and most media interviews I actually refuse these days because I'm actually busy running a business. Yeah and they'll hound me for an interview and we'll finally agree to it and then they'll publish a story saying, publicity seeking Kogan, da 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 da. It's like, you who, rang con me. who contacted who, yeah. Um, but it's, 
the bottom line is, yes, we have done a few what you could call stunts, but there's an, you know, a lot of truth is said in jest, and there's a lot of truth behind a lot of the things we did, like when we did the Internet Explorer 7 tax. Um, you could call that a stunt, but it was the biggest news in the world for 48 hours, mm. even, you know, which was a bit sad because there was an earthquake in another place of the world at that same time, but our IE7 tax was bigger news than that. Mm. Now, that hit a soft spot to every develop with every developer around the world because it actually is a real issue in the IT world. People not using the latest browsers and the amount of money wasted going on and making certain web pages compatible across multiple browsers. So, you know, when we gave out free HDMI cables to anyone who bought a TV from JB Hi-Fi or Harvey Norman, uh, I love we, that were, we were sending a message out there saying, you guys are currently getting ripped off on HDMI cables. These things cost a dollar. There is no difference between a $300 HDMI cable and a $5 HDMI cable. It's ones and zeros. You either have a signal or you don't. Um, so, yeah, you can call it stunts, but uh, there's, there's, an element of, there's an element of truth behind all of them and we're trying to get a message across. Janine, it seems to me that, that one of the advantages and the things that the consumer likes when you are the face of the brand is that, um, that you, it also symbolises that you're an insurgent brand, uh, that you're trying to, to take down the big guys or there's this, uh, this more hands-on approach. Um, is, that, is, is that part of the success? In, when you look back at it? Yeah, look, I think a lot of brands out there, people don't really think that there's a... They, they think there's a, a corporation behind it, so it has no soul. I think when you look at um, brands like you know, Lorna Jane and, and, and Boost, which are in that health sort of space, they want, they want to know that someone actually cares about them. So it's not just you know, some American brand that they haven't even heard of. It's like, oh, OK, they see the face, they see the name, they know that there's someone there really batting battling for them, yeah. and uh, the reality is we are. You know, every day we're going, how do we make it better? How do we make it healthier? Yeah. So I think because of that, and I think there's an honesty with that, so I think because of that, then you do have that people going, oh, look, I believe in the brand because they're that person that cares yeah. for, for me. You do have to be careful, like John said, about the, po the tall poppy, which is very real in Australia, unlike America, which they sort of celebrate it. I love it. Yeah, so it, it is that sort of fine line between, hang on, you can't be too far ahead of us, you've got to be with us. Yeah. But, you know, and I think you know, it comes with, you know, honesty and integrity. But also when, you, when, when you're the face of the brand and, and, and what I'm suggesting that it represents is that do you have to be careful about how many locations you're in, the expansion of the business? Because at a certain point in time, it's good that you're the face of the business, but part of that is that, okay, unlike the big corporation that can afford to be in every food court of every place, mm. but that's obviously your ambition. Um, is part of, is one of the limitations of being the face of the business an expectation that you will never be as big and as all pervasive as a faceless multinational? No, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think people expect you to be small just because there's a face of it. I mean, we are in every single food court. We are in every, you know, many, many street sites. So I think that they expect that when they do have a complaint that you respond to that. I think they do expect that we are continuing to innovate and improve. So I think the consumer's going, what do, and, and we listen to them, and mm. you know, we have a guarantee in every store, so we try and make it easy for people to get back to us and so I, we can fix their problems. Mm. But I don't think they have an expectation that you need to be boutique as, as such. 